Hey everyone, it's John. Uh, this is not a planned uh, video. This is just totally spontaneous, but I need to vent. I'm feeling super fired up. Uh, I've been reading uh, Shannon Caldwell Montez's uh, master's thesis, uh, The Secret Mormon, Mormon Meetings of 1922 in preparation for an interview I'm about to do with her. And I just have to express that her thesis fires me up in ways I don't think I've ever felt uh, so fired up, so angry, so upset before. Um, what her thesis shows, it, it shows two major things, and it's so outrageous to me. Uh, it's so um, overwhelming, my feelings of frustration and anger. The first thing her thesis shows to me is that for well over a hundred years, starting with, uh, you know, the Mormon church, uh, lying to European, uh, investigators about the practice of polygamy back home to then, uh, the post manifest post manifesto polygamy, the church lying to the world, uh, about its continued practice of polygamy. And I, when I mean the church, I mean the First Presidency and the Quorum of the Twelve and the Seventy. Uh, whether it's the 1912 Book, Ab Book of Abraham, New York Times article where all the church was put on notice that the Book of Abraham was a fraud. To, um, to the 1922 B.H. Roberts uh, meetings, again, where the First Presidency, the Quorum of the Twelve all the 70 were put on notice uh, about the deep, significant problems with the Book of Mormon and its lack of historicity. To the battles at BYU uh, over uh, the historical method, uh, the biblical criticism, historical criticism, evolution. Uh, you know, it's, whether it's Joseph Fielding Smith's battles with Talmadge and Woodstow and Eyring and Roberts and all the scientists, uh, whether it's Von Brody, uh, 1945, and the publishing of No Man Knows My History, whether it's the, you know, Leonard Arrington years, whether it's the reemergence re of the, the papyrus, the Book of Abraham papyrus in the 1960s, whether it's the emergence of the Tanners in the 60s and 70s, or the emergence of dialogue and sunstone in the 60s and 70s, only to be shut down in the early 70s, or in the early 80s, to Boyd K. Packer's talks about things that aren't, tr not all things that are true or useful, that the mantle is greater than the intellect, to the September 6th uh, in 1993, to uh, everything that's that's gone on in the internet from 2004 and beyond to silence and punish, you know, people like Jeremy Runnels, Grant Palmer, uh, so many people. Um, the brethren have always known that the church wasn't what it claims to be. They've known for at least 120 to 150 years, and they have been consciously and intentionally misleading uh, its members, suppressing information, punishing truth seekers for at least, at least 140 years, if not more. Uh, it has been multiple generations of intentional overt corruption and deception. Um, and it's, it's for so long, I gave them the benefit of the doubt that, okay, well, they didn't know, they didn't know until the Arrington years and Sunstone and Dialogue and, you know, it's just for the past 10 or 20 years that the brethren really have started to learn about the true facts of the church history. No, they've known all along. And they've intentionally silenced and punished uh, anyone who had the information. And they've hid the information. And that takes me to my second point that I'm just so furious about is I'm reading Shannon's thesis, her amazing thesis. I'm looking back at the articles published in Dialogue 
in the 80s and 90s. And I'm realizing all this stuff about B.H. Roberts, we've known. We've known it for 30 or 40 years. It's been written about in Dialogue and Sunstone. But because the church is so good about keeping its members from learning anything, stuff that's known 30 or 40 years ago is forgotten today. And stuff that was known in the 70s was forgotten a generation or two later. Stuff that was known in the 40s and 50s, the freaking excommunication of Richard Lyman, whose wife was president of the General Relief Society. And the fact that a couple generations later, no one's ever heard of Richard Lyman or his wife. Like, this is so outrageous that we as Mormons, as progressive Mormons, as post-Mormons, are so sheltered from the information, even when it's published, the church is successful at erasing the historical memory uh, to future generations. It's completely outrageous. It's got me super fired up. And I don't know when I've ever felt so fired up. How can we get the church leaders to stop lying to us? How can we get the LDS church leaders to stop misleading us? How can we get LDS church leaders to stop punishing truth tellers? They've been doing it for 140 years or more. How do we get them to stop firewalling their membership from the truth about its own history, such that even things that do penetrate the public, conscious, public consciousness are forgotten within a generation or two? I'm so... <laughs> I'm so flabbergasted. I'm so overwhelmed with frustration and anger. And I just call on all of you, learn the history. Read Fawn Brody's No Man Knows My History. Read Dan Vogel's Joseph Smith and the Making of a Prophet. Read Grant Palmer's An Insider's View. Read Dialogue. Read Sunstone. Listen to Mormon Stories podcast. Listen to Radio Free Mormon podcast. Year of Polygamy. Whatever you want to listen to. Learn and open your mouths. Speak up. If you have the privilege, if you have the means to be an honest, open truth teller, speak up. Uh, you know, don't harm yourself or the people around you. But if you have the resources, if you have the means to be a vocal uh, teacher, I'm not even going to say critic, just a vocal educator about the truth of Mormon history, of Mormon doctrine, about the church's deceptions for generations. We have to open our mouths. <laughs> we have to get the word out. We can't have it that more and more generations of Mormons uh, are deceived and misled. Uh, that the truth is hidden from them, like it has been for so long. Uh, we can't have more depression and anxiety for individual Mormons, whether it's uh, thinking Mormons, feminist Mormons, LGBT Mormons, trans, whatever the type of Mormons are. We can't have more anxiety and depression and suicidality of Mormons. We can't have more marriages compromised and destroyed over matters of truth, over matters of factual history. We can't have more LGBTQ suicides. We can't have more women uh, and their potentials being limited and harnessed uh, and hampered. We just have to spread the truth however we do it. This is a call. I'm calling you all. Learn and become truth speakers. Start podcasts, blog, go on social media, share the truth. Talk to family and friends. If you're in a position of privilege where you have the strength and the ability to do so, please speak up. Please spread the word. Please open your mouths. Uh, we can't have future generations continue to forget uh, the truth about Mormonism and its history. And we can't have future generations harmed by the deception and the corruption. I'm sorry I'm so overwhelmed, but this is how I feel. I uh, love you guys, and I'm about to start an amazing interview with Shannon uh, Caldwell Montez on the Secret Mormon Meetings of 1922. So join us if you can. Love you guys. Take care, everybody.